Hi guys, thanks for joining the webinar today. My name is Gilliam Elliott with Medical Tourism Business. Um, today I'm gonna be covering contracts and risk management in medical tourism. Now, before I start the presentation, I do wanna let you guys know I'm not a lawyer, but all the points that I'll be going over today, they were provided by our legal team as well as experience that I've had in the medical tourism industry. So the best way to mitigate your risk in the medical tourism industry is by working with the best healthcare providers, right? And having a strong healthcare provider network. And the way you do this is by making sure that these healthcare providers meet a certain standard, right? Making sure they meet a certain requirement. Um, and you do this by asking the right questions. Asking questions like how often does the provider perform this specific procedure? Um, finding out if this healthcare provider uh, has a joint commission international accreditation or an equivalent accreditation. Uh, making sure that they have state-of-the-art facilities and finding out if this healthcare provider has a medical specialty or extensive experience doing this particular procedure. Uh, and you want to also make sure that you're checking their success rates uh, and finding out if they have reviews that you can check from past patients. Um, also finding out their complication, infection, and mortality rates uh, and making sure that they're HIPAA compliant. Uh, and making sure that they protect the patient's health information. Um, and the best way you guys can do this is by doing on-site uh, on -site visits to these healthcare providers and going to these hospitals and doing tours. And we have resources that we can provide to you guys. We have sheets that you can fill out while you're there on site with these healthcare providers and making sure they meet your standard and meet your requirements. Um, we also have a certification course that goes over how to partner with healthcare providers abroad. So if you're new to the medical travel industry, you may be pondering the question, what is your exposure as a facilitator? As a medical tourism facilitator, there's a lot of things out of your control, but even though they're out of your control, they can very much so affect your business and also increase your exposure. And some of those factors are third party errors, um, things like exposure to infectious diseases, poor healthcare services, as well as surgical mistakes. And so as a responsible medical tourism facilitator, you want to make sure you have solid medical travel agreements in place to make sure your clients are being protected, uh, as well as your business and yourself. So I want to cover how to protect your personal assets when operating a medical travel agency. And the best line of defense uh, to protect your personal assets is by picking the appropriate business structure. And the best business structure I've seen uh, to limit your liability is a limited liability company, um, also known as an LLC. And the reason why I'm a big advocate for LLCs is because they keep your business and your personal assets separate. Um, so your personal assets won't be at risk if your LLC faces a lawsuit. Uh, but keep in mind, LLCs aren't available in every country. So you want to check with your local government and see if they'll be available for you. But keep in mind, you guys do have an array of different entities you can set up. So just do your research and find out what's the best entity for your company. So oftentimes when people speak of risk management and medical tourism, they leave out protecting their website. So one question you want to ask yourself is, is your website being legally protected? And one of the best ways of doing this is by making sure you have a privacy policy on your website. A privacy policy lets your users know what information you're collecting, as well as how you're handling their information, how you're protecting their information, and ultimately who you're sharing the data with. And since we are in medical tourism, and your website will be on medical topics, you want to make sure that your users know uh, that your site content is for informational and educational purposes only and should not be taken as professional medical advice. And the reason you want to do this is because even if this person isn't your client or even if someone isn't your client, they can go to your website, they can read your blog, and they can misuse the information that they read from your blog. And if they get negative effects from that, they could come after you or they can attempt to come after your business. So you want to let everyone know that comes to your website that your information is for educational purposes only. And that's to protect yourself, not only from people who use your service, but people who just visit your website and use your content. Another thing you want to make sure you have on your website to protect it is terms and conditions. And your terms and conditions are just rules and regulations for visitors who use your website. Um, and it also protects you from people who are trying to copy your information and possibly use it on other platforms. Uh, and if you guys need a professionally designed website, we also provide website design services. The next slide I'll be going over is the purpose of contracts. Um, the purpose of contracts is to document the terms and conditions of your relationship with the healthcare providers, with the patient, and with other partners that you'll have um, in the medical tourism process. And it's beneficial to all parties because everyone can look at this document and see who's responsible for what. 
Um, also, it's going to outline the rights, the duties, and the expectations of everyone that partakes in the medical tourism process. And it serves as a guiding document if issues occur, and it limits your overall liability as a medical tourism facilitator. Which party should have a written agreement in medical tourism? Uh, the three primary parties in the medical tourism process is the health tourism facilitator, uh, the medical tourists, and the overseas healthcare providers, and they should all have written agreements. And the next slide I want to go into is hiring a lawyer to compose your medical tourism agreements. Now, if you decide to hire a lawyer, you want to make sure they're familiar with the global healthcare industry, uh, and you want to make sure that they've written healthcare agreements before. Uh, if not, there's going to be a learning curve, and you're going to have to pay for that learning curve. Uh, and as you guys probably know, lawyers uh, can get really expensive, especially in, in niches. And we're in a niche market in medical tourism, and so you guys want to make sure you're not paying for that learning curve, and you want to make sure the lawyer isn't starting from scratch. So an option that you have is purchasing our agreements and having uh, your lawyer look over them and customize them for your company. Uh, and that's what a lot of people do. They'll come to us, they'll say, hey, we want to utilize you, you guys' agreements, uh, but we also want our lawyer to look at it. However, you can customize these agreements yourself because we provide every agreement and risk management resource that you'll need. And the different agreements that we have is we have patient applications, pre-screening and medical history forms, patient waiver contracts, uh, facilitated and hospital contracts, and patient and facilitator agreements. The benefits of pre-made contracts is that they safeguard your company through the medical tourism facilitation process and they eliminate possible errors. Guys, when you hire a lawyer, if they have no background in medical tourism, uh, sometimes they can leave out things and it can really leave your company exposed. So you need to eliminate possible errors and you need to make sure that your uh, contracts are solid. And that's the reason why a lot of people like to use our pre-made contracts because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. These contracts are, are already composed. Um, they're edible. They have edible fields that can be customized for your company's liking. They save you money so you don't have to spend um, you know, hundreds of dollars per hour on a lawyer. And other companies are having success with these agreements. And the next pre-made contract that I'll go over is our patient waiver agreement. By signing these agreements, your clients are acknowledging the risk and benefits that come along with getting medical treatment abroad. They're also agreeing to travel for their medical procedure at their own risk, um, and they're acknowledging that complications can arise. Through these agreements, you're letting the patient know that you don't provide any medical advice, treatments, therapy, or you don't prescribe any medication. Through these agreements, they also spell out to the patient that you aren't a healthcare provider and you aren't a medical professional. Through these agreements, we also have no guarantee clauses, which lets the patient know that you can't guarantee any specific outcome from their medical trip. We also have a facilitated hospital contract that spells out the agreed upon terms between both parties, you and the overseas healthcare provider. They also outline the services and duties that you'll be providing as a medical tourism facilitator, as well as what you expect from the overseas healthcare provider. Um, it also goes over how you'll be paid, uh, when you'll be paid, uh, your commission amount, um, unexpected medical events, and it also has a referral clause. And when I say a referral clause, this just means that you're letting the healthcare provider know that you want to be paid for your direct referrals as well as your indirect referrals. And when I say indirect referrals, I mean, let's say a patient goes abroad and they have a companion with them on this trip and that companion gets a medical procedure. We want to make sure that you get compensated for that as well. Or another scenario, if the patient goes back to this hospital at a later date, we're letting the hospital know through these agreements that you want to be compensated for that as well. And so we're just trying to make sure that you're compensated for all your efforts and for referring your patients to these hospitals. Another contract that we provide is uh, our facilitator and client agreements. Um, these agreements goes over your scope of work as a medical tourism facilitator, and it lets the patient know what you'll be responsible for. It lets them know that you'll be screening medical facilities, doctors and hotels, as well as other third party providers. Um, it also lets them know that you'll be giving them educational guidance on travel and on physicians, and it outlines the fees and the package options that you have available for them, as well as the deposit and cancellation guidelines. We also have a lot of clauses and provisions that limit your liability. And what these agreements help you do is clear your business of any potential liability. It lets the patients and the partners know that you won't be responsible for any third party liabilities like surgical errors, medical malpractice, hospital issues, or anything out of your control. Um, it also lets the patient know that you can't anticipate any theft or accidents. Um, it also lets them know uh, that you won't be responsible for any errors that result in monetary compensation. Medical complication provisions, we also address this in our agreements. 
by signing these agreements, the patient is signing off that they understand that there can be complication that arises or that happens, um, and they're releasing you as a facilitator from all liability arising from complications. Um, they also are acknowledging that the price estimates can change um, if complications arise. And through the agreements, you're also offering the patient um, complication insurance. Now, whether they reject it or accept it, that's up to you, but you want to always offer complication insurance to your clients. That way, if any litigation does arise from complications, um, you can show that you did offer the client complication insurance and that they rejected it and that you were being proactive. On the other side of the coin, if complication does arise and the patient has complication insurance, they'll be taken care of. Now, we've went a step further than just providing these pre-made contracts for you. We've also partnered with a complication insurance company. Um, and so as a member, we can connect you with them as well. Governing law clauses, you want to make sure that in all your agreements that you have a governing law clause. Um, as you know, uh, medical travel is a multinational business and the patient, the agent and the doctor, they can be from all different countries. Uh, and if a lawsuit takes place or if legal proceedings happen, this can cause a jurisdiction issue. And so you want to make sure the contracts are interpreted in your home country. Um, on these agreements, they can be personalized. And in the governing law section, you can simply put in your country just to make sure you're in the best position if a lawsuit does happen. Now, we spoke a lot about lawsuits and how to protect yourself through these pre-made agreements, but I want to talk a little bit about how to avoid litigation. And one way you can do this is to avoid oral agreements. You want to make sure that you have everything in writing. That way, if any issues does arise, everyone can revert to the contracts and they can see who's responsible for what, and that can protect you as well. Another thing you want to do is make sure you're being proactive by outlining possible risks and how they'll be handled if they arise. Another important way to avoid litigation is making sure you have a dispute resolution in place. All of our agreements has a mediation clause in there. This just means that if an issue does arise, before you guys drag out a lawsuit or spend thousands of dollars on a lawsuit, a third party comes in and he tries to help you guys find common ground and try to avoid litigation. And a lot of times this can be really successful in avoiding lawsuits. And then the last point on this slide I'll cover is being selective. You want to make sure you avoid high risk and problematic clients. That's going to save you a lot of headache as well. So as some of you know, I've been in the medical travel industry for nearly a decade. And over that time, I've seen a lot of different scenarios when it comes to contracts and when it comes to managing risk in the medical travel industry. And one thing I want to encourage you guys not to do is not to let a bad contract ruin your business. Because I've seen people get themselves into horrible situations by writing their own contracts. Now, if you have a legal background or if you've written business contracts before, that's one thing. Uh, but if you have no experience writing medical tourism contracts or contracts in general, I would caution you against writing medical tourism contracts for yourself and using your business as an experiment. And I've seen some people who have solid medical tourism contracts and they've been able to get themselves out of tight situations. And I've also seen the opposite situations where people have gotten themselves into bad situations by having weak medical tourism contracts. So I want to caution you guys against writing your own medical tourism contracts. And the reason you don't want to do this is because you don't want your clients to end up in a bad situation and not have any recourse. Uh, you don't want your business to end up in a bad situation and you don't want your personal assets to be at risk if an unfortunate event takes place because I've seen people go online, use free online resources to try to make their contracts, and they ultimately end up with a weak contract, uh, and it causes problems down the road, and it could ultimately cost you money. If you get in a situation where you have to test your medical tourism contracts, and you've left clauses out, and you left yourself vulnerable, it can cost you serious money down the road, and you could also end up spending a lot of time in a lawsuit. And you guys have to keep in mind that your medical tourism contracts are the foundation of your business. Um, they're a contract with all your partners, with your clients. Uh, they're really going to detail the way your relationships play out down the road. And once you get a solid medical tourism contract, you can use it for the duration of your business. So I would encourage you not to cut corners, not to try to do it on your own to save a few bucks. Make an investment that will pay off for the duration of your business. You know that these are tried and true contracts that medical tourism facilitators are using. And in a lot of scenarios, you're really going to get the benefit of avoiding lawsuits because if something goes wrong, you could point to your contracts and say, hey, I wasn't responsible for that. Or, hey, here's a party that's responsible for that. And as an agent, you're going to have the confidence to coordinate these international medical tourism trips, knowing that you're legally protected and you're in the best situation possible if something does go wrong. 
And I will facilitate a gold membership. It provides all these contracts and risk management tools that we went over today. It also comes with our medical tourism certification. It comes with mentorship, uh, a marketing plan, uh, practical tools and manuals and templates. You also can enjoy 20% discount on web design services, as well as a discount on our marketing services. And we also promote you guys through our directories on makemedicaltrip.com and medicaltourismbusiness.com. And this is an annual membership. Our medical travel agent course can also be a huge benefit to your company. Um, it teaches you how to start a medical tourism agency from scratch. It also shows you how to properly vet healthcare providers um, and questions to ask before you partner with healthcare providers. It also teaches you the best practices in global healthcare. Um, it goes over patient safety. It goes over before and after care, continuum of care, patient experience, and it decreases your overall risk and liability when it comes to medical travel. Another great thing about this certification is that it shows a third party has validated your company and it instills trust in your prospects and potential clients. So I've told you guys about our medical tourism agreements. I've told you guys about our annual membership, uh, our certification and all the other risk management tools. But I want you guys to hear from actual medical tourism facilitators who are utilizing these uh, contracts and who are having success with these agreements. So I want you guys to watch this short video. Do you guys feel like the contracts, the patient leads, and the other resources we provide, do you guys feel like that's valuable to your company and helping you grow it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That That's that's honestly one of the, the main reasons that I, I signed up. It helps protect us, especially the contracts. That was one of the main things that, I, that really intrigued me because I didn't have to go and hire an expensive attorney and, and have them you know, write all this stuff up and at the same time, not knowing if the attorney really knows about the medical industry, tourist, tourism industry. And uh, so this was a, a big, a big factor for us. It's not something that's been around for, you know, hundred of years. So you can just go and, and, and quickly check it out. This is something that's new. So to have that type of um, resources and feedback in the communication uh, with you was invaluable. I really appreciate that. And then and Ruby as well. Yeah, well, Dennis hit on a good point. Um, this medical tourism isn't new, but it's not a mainstream business. There's not a lot of resources out there, um, especially to you know getting these contracts, patient history forms, patient waivers. We've already started to use all of these tools, and they're super helpful. And I'm telling you, just that you're going to save so much money. Um, you know, you would have spent whatever you spent just trying to get attorneys and people in the medical field to help you make these contracts. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of why I had a slide on the uh, uh, medical tourism facilitated contracts because it's one of our most pro uh, popular uh, membership benefits, and it really can save you money. Both of you guys uh, touched on it. I mean, going out and getting a, uh, getting an attorney uh, is so expensive, and also there's not many attorneys that even know what medical tourism is. Um, so they have to figure out the industry before they can even work on the contracts for you. We already have them pre-made, ready to go. Um, you know, facilitators are already using them. Both of you guys are using them. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. So that short clip was from a recent webcast we had about our certified medical travel agent course. If you guys want to get access to the full webinar, reach out to me. Um, I'll send it over to you guys. But that's the presentation for today. And I want to thank you guys for joining this webinar. So if you guys have any questions or you guys want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me by my email address here on the screen. I also left my WhatsApp telephone number, our URL and my social media accounts. So I look forward to speaking to you guys soon. And thanks so much for joining today.